What does your team need this offseason? Let's take a look. AFC version right here. The NFC version's up as well. Mike Renner, you wrote the entire article over at ProFootballFocus.com if you guys want the full analysis. But let's go team by team. The biggest offseason need. A lot of these teams have a bunch of them, but we highlighted one mm -hmm. per team. Starting in the AFC East with the New England Patriots, you went with wide receiver. Yeah, I think the co sort of cover's been depleted there over the past handful of years. Josh Gordon's future is uncertain. Rob Gronkowski is not the Rob Gronkowski we've seen in years past. Julian Edelman's in his mid-30s now. Chris Hogan's going to be a free agent. I think just Tom Brady needs some wide receivers. We saw his grade didn't really fall off this year, but the efficiency of that offense did take a step back. Yeah, in today's NFL, you could use more playmakers rather than less and not just rely completely on the quarterback. And then speaking of quarterbacks, the Miami Dolphins, Ryan Tannehill, he's not going to break he, out in it's, year it's, nine. It's I done. think that's the era has come to its conclusion. Seven years of Tannehill, seven years of bad luck for the Dolphins. It just it didn't work out. You got to address that position. So quarterback for the Dolphins, keep an eye out on the draft, and I think they're mm -hmm. going to be making some moves there. The New York Jets, this feels like I've been saying this, or right. we've been saying this for seven, eight years now. It's, edge defender for the, the Jets. I think it's the Vernon Golston curse. It's been ever since then. And they a good edge defender from the Jets since then. They just they need someone to rush the passer off the edge. In that defense, uh, that it's just they have to. <laughs> they have not had one. There's just that's been a common theme for them. And then for the Buffalo Bills, they just need playmakers in general, highlighting wide receivers in particular, guys that can catch the ball from Josh Allen. I was gonna say this could just say offense outside of QB. <laughs> he needs everything there in Buffalo. Uh, but the Kelvin Benjamin experiment didn't work out. Cut ways with him. Zay Jones has the lowest yards per route run of any wide receiver in the league last year. So hey, you need someone. They're going to have to load up at wide receiver. Let's go to the AFC West. Kansas City Chiefs were going linebacker. I think that makes a ton of sense for the way they're playing D. I was going to say, there was linebacker last year. They gave Anthony Hitchens a big deal, and he was the lowest grade linebacker in the league this year. But you just can't have him coming back and still being the lowest grade linebacker in the league. I don't care if you're paying him a lot. You need someone there to step in and be an upgrade, because that's where the biggest sort of incremental change could come on that defense. Another annual list here. Yes, Another right. annual one on the list. The offensive line for the Los Angeles Chargers. Forrest Lamp in the second round and Dan Feeney in the third round back in 2017. Neither have worked out. Feeney was a bottom three guard in the NFL. Forrest Lance only played 17 snaps in two years. Someone has to step in there and be better. It is frustrating when you put resources to fix yep. it and, and it you're trying work. to address it and it's not working out. You still have to go back and, and find ways to mm -hmm. do it. Denver Broncos, cornerback. Now their offense has certainly taken a step back since they won the Super mm -hmm. Bowl back in 2015, but we could argue the drop off at cornerback has been just as detrimental. Exactly. The no-fly zone ain't no more. Chris Harris, the only really holdover playing, still holding his weight, but then he was injured again this past year. Going to be 30 years old, and then Bradley Roby, a free agent. When he did step in and become a star, he allowed a passer rating well over 100. I'm not sure he's the answer. you got to find someone there because that's what that was the calling card. That's why they won 2015 Super Bowls, because of this position. Yeah, and you got to address it with either multiple draft picks, free agency, just throw mm -hmm. a bunch at it, and then the Oakland Raiders. It's not easy finding edge defenders in today's NFL, Mike. Exactly. But that's what they need. Again, another one where you could just say defense. You need someone at every single level of this defense, but 13 sacks when the next worst team had 30 sacks, you might need one of these. Yeah, so they just need disruptors on the defensive side of the ball. Let's go to the AFC South. Another consistent theme, the Houston Texans. They did not have the draft capital to really address their offensive line mm -hmm. last year. They tried in the middle rounds. But I think they have to go back to it this year. Yeah, Julian Davenport, 66 pressures, most of any tackle in the NFL. And the thing was, the other tackle on the other side was probably worse for the rest of these. They just switched to, they just switched between the two, though, at the time. So awful there. And they chipped him so much. They gave him so much help, still allowed the most pressures. This is, you know, a, maybe the biggest need of any single team in the NFL at the moment. And then the Indianapolis Colts, you're going cornerback. They play a ton of zone. Yes. Do they protect their corners a little bit, or is it still a need? They protect their corners, but Pierre Desir, their number one corner, the guy the highest grade, he's going to be a free agent. You need someone to step in there, and the good news is they have more cap space than any other team in the NFL to address that. Yeah, they're going to have one of the most important off-seasons of any team with what they can potentially do in free agency. Tennessee Titans, edge defender. This is one of those examples to me where a few years ago they had Derek Morgan, they had Brian Arakpo, and year after year you're like, oh, they're set, they're set. Yep. But once Arakpo retires and Morgan gets old, you have to keep going back and getting those yeah, edge exactly. defenders. Exactly, and they got Harold Landry in the second round last year, who we both liked and was fine as a rookie, but you still got the other position to address, and the rest of their pass rush as a whole 
wasn't too explosive this year, so adding any sort of talent to that group would have a big impact on that defense. And then another team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, where you hate when it comes a year late. If they could have said, look, Blake Bortles, he's doing okay, but we have to keep addressing the quarterback position. We can upgrade it. Now they seem like they're in desperate need of a quarterback. Yep, exactly. This is, I mean, no duh here. This is pretty obvious. Blake Bortles, if you watch him in all this past season, this has to change. And let's get to the AFC North with the Baltimore Ravens. Edge defender, I feel like I've been putting edge defenders to Baltimore in my mock drafts for years now, but yeah. Terrell Suggs keeps going. He does, but he's gonna be a free agent and he did slow down a little this season. Zadarius Smith, the other starting edge defender, gonna be a free agent as well. So both guys hitting free agency, at least have to try to re-sign one of them, but this has been their calling card. Drafting as many edge defenders as possible, having a bunch of different guys they can throw at opposing offensive lines. That's been so huge to the Ravens' defense that they need to replenish the coffers there. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers feels like they've been trying to revamp that defense for multiple years now, but linebacker's still an issue. Yeah, there was a distinct difference in what this defense looked like when it had Ryan Shazier and then after his gruesome injury. It has not been the same whatsoever. That is why they have not really been competitive since, so I think that easily the biggest need defensively. Need some speed, need some guys that can play zone, mm -hmm. and then the Cleveland Browns, even though they have Miles Garrett, even mm -hmm. though they have Larry Ogunjobi, the defensive line. Yeah, those are pretty much it along the defensive line. Emmanuel Ogba had one of the lowest pass rushing productivities of any defensive lineman in the league last year, and then they overplayed Ogunjobi and Garrett. They ran them into the ground. You don't want your defensive lineman playing every single snap of every single game. You want to give them a little bit of a breather so they're effective. They need just some sort of rotation there. And then finally, the Cincinnati Bengals, you went very specific here, right tackle. For right Bengals. tackle. It's almost as specific as the center that they drafted last year. You need to address this offensive line that was still not very good a season ago. Right tackle, Bobby Hart. I mean, there's a reason that he got cut from the Giants, whose biggest need was also right tackle for us. So huge need there. And in today's NFL, the right tackle, just as important as the left tackle. I say it all the time. Exactly. And it is so important. So there you have it. It's your AFC team needs. Let us know in the comments below what you think. Remember, this is just one need. A lot of these teams have mm -hmm. multiple needs. We'll be going through the full team needs breakdowns as we get closer to free agency and the draft. And be sure to check out the full article over at ProFootballFocus.com.